This is video 204 on the comparative advantage lesson. Learning target 204, I can determine which country has a comparative advantage in the production of a product using inputs and outputs and explain the significance of this for trade and production. As far as determining which country should make what good or which good a country should trade for, absolute advantage doesn't tell us much. Comparative advantage does. It's the basis for trade. And we're going to say that when we compare two countries side by side and looking at two goods, that whichever country has the comparative advantage in a good, that's the good that it should specialize in and make and then trade for the rest. Now, the key to determining comparative advantage is opportunity cost. So in our steps for determining comparative advantage, first step is to calculate the opportunity cost to a country of producing one of a good. Then next, whichever country has the lowest opportunity cost in producing a good, that country has the comparative advantage for that good and should specialize in and make that good and then trade for the other good. So our chart here, we have China and Japan, fish and cars, simplifying it down. First step we want to do is calculate the opportunity cost to China and Japan when they make fish and when they make cars. So there are four opportunity costs we're going to calculate. The equation for that, the opportunity cost to make one of a particular good, say good X, is going to be equal to the amount of the other good, good Y, divided by the amount of good X that you can make. So it's the amount of the other good divided by the amount of the good that you're trying to determine the opportunity cost for. If this helps you, you can think of an Oreo. Chocolate on the outside, cream on the inside. Uh, when you're looking at that equation there, one of good X equals good Y divided by good X. Now, if these numbers were inputs, the equation would be different. The equation to determine the opportunity cost for one of good X would be equal to the amount of good X you can make divided by the amount of good Y. For most problems you do, they'll be dealing with outputs, but there could be some input problems as well. Again, inputs would be the amount of time it takes to make one of something or the cost it takes to make one of something. But let's go back to outputs. So let's say China can make 20 fish or 40 cars. Japan can make 10 fish or 50 cars or some combination in between. We want to determine who has the comparative advantage in fish, who has the comparative advantage in cars, and thus who should make fish, who should make cars, and then these two countries are going to trade with each other. And because of that, both countries are going to be better off economically, and I'll get to that later as far as exactly how these countries are going to be better off, but for now you can just trust me on that. So we're going to calculate four opportunity costs, and the way I do it here, I would set it up exactly this way in your notes. There's something that's coming up later which is going to be easier to determine if you draw this out exactly as I do here. So we're going to find the opportunity cost to China of making one fish, or one F. We're going to calculate the opportunity cost to Japan of making one fish. We're going to calculate the opportunity cost to China of making one car. And we're going to calculate the opportunity cost to Japan of making one car. So China and fish. The opportunity cost to China of making one fish is going to be the amount of the other goods, cars, that they can make 40 divided by the amount of fish they can make. So in this case, it's 40 divided by 20, and that equals two cars. So the opportunity cost to China of making one fish is two cars. If they make one fish, they can't make two cars. That's what they give up. Just like when they make 20 fish, they can't make 40 cars because all of the resources they have are going into 20 fish, so they don't have any left over to go into the 40 cars. Japan. The opportunity cost to Japan of making one fish equals the amount of the other good, 50 cars, divided by the 10 fish. So their opportunity cost is 5 cars. 
China in cars. Opportunity cost to China of making one car, the amount of the other good, 20 fish, divided by the amount of the good that you find in the opportunity cost for cars. So 20 divided by 40 equals half a fish. And for Japan, opportunity cost of making one car, 10 divided by 50, and that equals one-fifth of a fish. So our first step is done. Calculate the opportunity cost to each country of making one of each of the goods. Then our question is, which country has the comparative advantage in fish? Whichever country has the lower opportunity cost has the comparative advantage in that good and should specialize in and make that good. China's opportunity cost of making one fish is two cars. Japan's is five cars. So China has the lower opportunity cost. Therefore, China has the comparative advantage in fish. They should make fish. Just stick to making fish. Don't even worry about cars. Which country has the comparative advantage in cars? Japan's opportunity cost of one car is one-fifth of a fish. China's is one-half of a fish, one-fifth less than one-half. So therefore, Japan has the comparative advantage in cars. They should just stick to making cars. Don't worry about making fish. So Japan's going to make cars, China's going to make fish, and then they can trade with each other. And because of this specialization in trade, each country is going to be better off in the end uh, instead of being self-sufficient and each country being isolated and trying to make it themselves. Now let's turn to inputs. Let's say these numbers represented inputs, the time it takes to make one of something. Which country then would have the comparative advantage in fish? We'll just look at fish for this one. Well, for inputs, switch the order you divide. So for China, instead of dividing 40 divided by 20, divide 20 by 40. You get half a fish. And this makes sense because if it takes China 20 minutes to make one fish, and it takes them 40 minutes to make one car, well, in the 20 minutes it took them to make one fish, what could they have gotten done instead? Or what did they not get done? instead. Well, they could have gotten done a half a car. Since it takes 40 minutes to make one car, in 20 minutes they could have gotten a half a car uh, done. And that should say uh, a half a car, not half a fish there. Sorry about that. For Japan, 10 divided by 50, and that would be one-fifth of a car. So for inputs, one-fifth less than one-half. If these were inputs, Japan would have the comparative advantage in fish. You st for inputs, you still look at the number uh, with the lowest opportunity cost. Now you try. Answer this question. The United States' production possibilities are as follows. They can make 150 clothes or 100 software. Malaysia can make 60 clothes or 10 software. Show, make sure you calculate the opportunity costs and explain which country has the comparative advantage in clothes and in software. You can pause the video now to work this out. I would draw the exact same chart as I previously did in your notes. So hopefully you set something up like this. United States and Malaysia, clothes and software. And our first step is going to be to calculate the opportunity costs to the United States and Malaysia of clothes and software. So the United States and making one piece of clothing, what's their opportunity cost there? The amount of the other good, 100 software, divided by 150, so the opportunity cost is two-thirds software. Labeling is important. Make sure you got the one C, the one clothes, and the two-thirds S, two-thirds software. The opportunity cost isn't just two-thirds, it's two-thirds software. Opportunity cost to Malaysia of making one piece of clothing, 20 divided by 60 would be one-third software. Opportunity cost to the United States of making one software, 150 divided by 100 would be one and a half clothes. And Malaysia and software, 60 divided by 20 would be three clothes. So the question asked, which country has the comparative advantage in clothes? Which country has the comparative advantage in software? If we isolate clothes, Malaysia's opportunity cost of one-third software 
is less than the United States of two-thirds. So Malaysia would have the comparative advantage in clothes. They should just stick to making clothes. Don't worry about software. In the software side, the United States' opportunity cost of one and a half clothes is less than Malaysia's of three clothes. So on the software side, the United States has the comparative advantage in software.